Welcome back to Stormworks Basics. This is the module engine tutorial series part four. So what we're going to do is we're going to take the setup from part one, which was making a module engine work set up to work for a car. And we're going to convert it to work as a generator. So this is going to be useful for a lot of cases. If you want to make something diesel electric, if you want to just make a generator to charge other things. So let's go ahead and get started. So this is the exact model from part one. So you can just go ahead into the workshop and grab this if you'd like to follow along. So it's very simple to turn this into a generator. So we're going to go ahead is we're going to go into the microcontroller here. And if we look down the bottom here, we already did this in part one. We made an alternator. This is a PID that will take a desired value of one, which is a fully charged battery, and it will compare it to what level the battery is currently at. So we want a one. If the battery is anywhere less than a one, this is going to give us a positive number, which is going to then charge the battery. And that's all we really want to do with a generator. Uh, the more electricity we take from the battery, the faster, the more the engine is going to rev up and produce more electricity. Now, there's going to be a small scale example. We're just going to take this two cylinder engine from part one and we're going to hook it up to a small generator. Now, if you need more electricity, you're going to need a bigger engine. So let's go ahead and start working on this. So the first thing we want to do here is really simple where this is going to the alternator. We're going to go ahead and we're going to drag this up top. So let's go ahead and we'll refresh ourselves on how this works for a car. So if we have a car here, we're going to be pressing the WS key. So in this case, W, and that's going to go in here. And if we look at the formula, it's X times the W key, which goes up to a positive one. So that's the maximum value there. And it's going to multiply it by 15 RPS. That's the max RPS we want. We want more RPS. We increase that. We want less. We decrease it. We also have the idle. This is what the engine will idle at. Now, remember, this needs to be above two or else the engine is going to shut down. All right. So really simply, all we do here is we go down here to the alternator and we grab the PID and we're going to plug that right in to the X component. All right. Now we're going to change a little bit here. So we don't need to multiply X times 15. All we're going to do is do X. So what this is going to do is this is going to take that PID from the alternator. It's going to come up here and it's going to give us a value. All right. It's going to give us some sort of RPS value. As the battery starts to deplete more quickly, the number is going to rise. And that's going to ask the engine to give us a higher RPS, which is going to give us more electrical production. As we start to fill that battery and we're getting close to 100%, it's going to start to back off the RPS. So this will save us fuel, this will save us some noise, and this will increase our efficiency. So for now, what we'll do is we'll keep the engine idle at 3.5. We'll keep the max RPS at 15. Again, to look at that formula, it's just a clamp. X is going to be coming now from the alternator PID. Y is going to be the idle, and Z is going to be the maximum RPS that we want. All right, so now what we want to do is we're going to take it off of the seat. We're no longer going to have a seat control here. So we need to change this up a little bit. All right, so let's go ahead back in here. And what we're going to use instead is just a toggle button. All right, so that's the start generator button, and this is going to now take the place of the seat. You don't need a seat with a generator. All right, so now what we're going to do is where it says 6, start generator is going to plug right into there. So before we were just using the 6 key on our seat to start it up. Now what we're using is this uh, toggle button right here. So we can get rid of that six. All right, now we don't need this two anymore. This two here, again, is the WS in the seat. We're not going to do that, but we notice it's connected to something. So let's go ahead and look down what that is. So when we're running a car, we don't want the clutch to apply until we want to actually go forward, right? The clutch is connecting the engine to the wheels through the transmission, and that is allowing us to move forward. And so we no longer want that. So what was happening before is when we press the W key, all right, and if the W key was greater than zero, so i.e. we we're pressing on the W key, and the, uh, the RPS from the engine was greater than 3.5, we need that engine to rev up a little bit to be able to have enough torque to get us moving. That would then trigger the up counter and increase the clutch value. We no longer need the W element of that uh, because we're not going to be sitting in the seat and revving up with our foot or the uh, W key in this case. We're going to be when the alternator says, hey, let's rev up it. We would then want the clutch to apply. So really quickly, all we can do is get rid of the greater than there. And then what we want to do is right here where it's uh, if the RPS is greater than 3.5, the clutch engagement RPS, we're going to plug that right in here to the up-down counter, and I'm going to plug that into not right there. We can get rid of this and. 
So we no longer need that WS component because we're no longer pressing the WS key to make this generator go. It's automatically going to work. So that's uh, a change we need to do there. So now that this is out of the way, we can go ahead and we can also get rid of that seat. So we're no longer using the seat here. So we can go ahead and delete that right there. All right. So let's get rid of that. All right. So we should be all set here, right? We have a uh, we press the button. It's going to start the generator up. All these nodes are going. We'll quickly go through these. If the um, button is pressed and the temperature is less than 110, if you remember from part one, this is our overheat protection system. This prevents us from uh, having the engine catch on fire. That will cap it at 115 degrees. At 110 degrees, we'll automatically stutter the PID so that we do not catch on fire. So if we forget a cooling system or we run too hot, it will prevent us from catching on fire and damaging our engine. And we actually still works pretty well. It will start the system and it will still work. Uh, down here, this will also uh, trigger the starter. So if the RPS is less than 2.5 and the button is pressed, it will uh, trigger the starter. So if we ever stall, this will automatically restart us. Down here, that is turning in the PID for the alternator. So that's all the things that are being done by that toggle. So let's go ahead and update, and we should be able to uh, move on from here. So now the seat is gone. We can get rid of the seat. The wheel, we can get rid of the wheel. All right, I'm just going to tuck the battery in. Now the battery, again, we're reading this battery. As the battery level goes down, right, that means we're using electricity. Then we want the engine to rev up and to generate. All right, so what we're going to do here is we're going to go ahead and we're going to grab a gearbox. Now, generators are pretty simple. The faster you move the generator, the more electricity you're going to make. Now, it's you don't get anything for free. If you remember the transmission tutorial, you don't get anything for free. All right, so you're doing a bunch of things with gearing. The, the main things you're doing is you're either converting the torque, the power of the engine, to RPS, which is speed, or you're converting speed into torque, which is power. There's two different things there. All right, if the arrow is pointing towards the engine, that means that you are converting the torque, the power of the engine, for more RPS, speed, okay? If the arrow is pointing the other direction, like this, that means you are converting the speed of the engine into torque, power, all right? You don't get anything for free. You can't just have a tiny engine power something huge unless you gear it way, way down. Uh, if you want to go faster, you can gear up, but you may not have the power for that either. So you need to keep an eye on that. All right, so to really simplify this even more, so right here, let's go to a 3-1. If we have a 3-1 there and the arrow is pointing towards the engine, all right, for every one rotation of the engine, we're getting three rotations of the, in this case, generator. The other one here, if we assume it's 3-1 again, when the arrow is pointing away, what that means is for every one, two, three turns of the engine, we're only getting a one turn out here of the generator. All right, and so that's really not what we want with the generator. We don't need to increase the torque unless we want a larger generator. Uh, you know, generally what you're going to do is the faster you can spin that generator, the better. Now, because of the small size of this engine, it is only two cylinders. Likely what we're going to do is just put on one small generator, all right? Now, the larger the generator, this is the largest one here, the more efficient it is. But this is such a tiny motor, we're not going to be able to run that. So if you wanted to run a larger generator, you need a bigger motor. For example, I just built a diesel locomotive. It has an eight-cylinder 3x3 that runs a large generator. You're going to need a big, big, big engine to do that. So uh, this is all scalable. You can make bigger engines with this system. That works fine. But we're just going to make it small for now. Now, what we're going to do here is, if you notice, I have ratio 1 is 1 to 1. Ratio 2 is going to be 6 5. So what we're going to do is we're going to also tune in the maximum value we can put on here. Uh, pretty basic from the transmission tutorial and the gearing tutorial. Uh, what you want to do is you want to keep increasing the gear ratio until it actually, in this case, causes us to lose power. What that means is we reach the highest gear ratio possible with this size of engine. So you'll eventually get to a point where if you keep increasing the gear ratio, you're going to lose power. It makes perfect sense. What you're doing is you're trading away your torque, your power for RPS speed. Eventually, you're going to trade away so much power, you do not have the power to be able to turn that generator. All right, so that's how you find out your gear ratio there. So what we're going to do ahead is we're going to grab a toggle, and this toggle will be for switching the gearbox. That's going to be part of our tuning, all right? You always want to tune your systems. You're going to need to understand how they work in order to be able to tune them. All right, so the next thing we'll do is we'll go over here to the microcontroller again, 
and we want to add some nodes here. So what we want to do is we want to read what the PID is doing for the alternator. This is going to help us to tune this in. All right, so I'm going to go ahead and add a number here. Okay, so this is the alternator PID value. All right, and so this is going to uh, read out what the PID is telling the engine to do. So for example, let's say the PID is reading out uh, 0.1. That means it wants it to go 0.1 RPS. And then if it's very, very slow, we know that our p-value on our PID is too low. If it goes up and it says, hey, give me 5,000 RPS, we know that our p-value is way, way, way too high. If we notice it's oscillating back and forth, we know that the number is too high. So we're going to also tune in the PID here. So let's go ahead and we're going to make this a little bit wider here. All right, now we should only need the p-value. Now, you can get very, very complicated with this. You can spend four or five hours tuning your PID in to be exactly perfect to get your RPS within six decimal places. Real life is not that precise. All right, if you have a little bit of change in air density, if you have a change in altitude, which also changes air density, if you have a change in temperature, which changes air density, all these things are going to be... Uh, are going to cause bigger changes than six decimal places of accuracy. You do not need to be that accurate. So we can just do a p-value. Are there more accurate methods? Of course. But again, this is the basics tutorial. We're not going into super duper detail here. It's going to be your p-value, and this is going to be how we tune the PID. So the larger the p-value in general, it's going to give us a bigger number faster. Uh, the lower the p-value, it's going to give us a smaller number slower. All right, and so we're going to tune that in. All right, so let's go ahead in here, and we'll take those two parts, and we'll start to plug them in. All right, so here we go. We have first is the alternator PID value. That's actually, let's change it real quick. That needs to be an output. We're going to read that out to a dial, and then we have the P value for the alternator. So what we're going to do here is we're going to take this P value. We're going to plug it right in there, and we're going to use a keypad. That's why I like these advanced PIDs. We can use a keypad and tune it live. Over here, we're going to take the actual value from the PID, and we're going to read that out. This is going to give us a visual representation on a dial of what our system is doing. It's going to make it a lot easier to figure out how to tune this up. All right, so let's go ahead. We want to get a keypad. So let's stick that right here, and we want to get a dial right here. All right, and so we're going to plug these in. All right, so this here is going to be your alternator PID value right there. That's going to read what the, what the PID is doing. All right, and then over here, this is the keypad. That's for the P value. All right, so this here is going to be your P value. All right, and this is going to be the PID value. All right, so this is going to read these out to me. All right, next thing we need another toggle, right? We're going to use a toggle now to turn on the system. So this is the generator start slash stop. All right, and so this over here is going to be gear change. All right, cute, beautiful. All right, so let's connect everything up. So that's going to the gear. This is going to go right here to the start generator. All right, these are already connected up there. Now let's hook up all the electricity here. All right, the generator is going to plug just back in. Uh, we could Generally, it's good, good practice to plug it back into the battery. And then this gear here only needs to be plugged to electricity if we're going to switch it. In this case, we are going to switch it to see what gear ratio works best for us. All right, now... This system is not going to use a lot of electricity because we don't have much going on here. So we need something that's going to use up a little electricity. You can use a bunch of things. You can use a motor. You can use a ton of different things to try to generate the system. This is a very small motor. It's not going to be able to produce a lot. So we're just going to do a bunch of lights here. So let's just go ahead and we'll set up a bunch of lights here. All right. Real simple there. We're going to go ahead. We'll string these lights together and they're going to plug in. All right. So what I want to do here is I'm going to copy another toggle here. And this is going to be for the lights. All right. So we'll label that. And so what this is going to allow me to do is I can turn the lights on and off, and this is going to show you how the system works. If we shut the light off, what's going to happen? Well, we're not using up as much electricity anymore, so you'll notice the motor will rev down, will produce less electricity. If we turn the lights back on, we're going to start to be using electricity, and we're going to have to uh, produce more. The engine is going to rev up and turn the generator faster. All right, so let's go plug those all in. So now we can independently control these. All right, make sure everything's plugged in with electricity. We should be good here. So let's go ahead and we'll spawn. All right, so our system is all hooked up here. And we're going to go ahead. We need to put in a p-value for that alternator or it's not going to do anything. Now, because we already have the engine portion of this set up and because our minimum value is 3.5, let's go ahead and start anyway. So we can start with no alternator in here. 
the engine start and it runs because it does have the other PID working. If we look here, you can see that the uh, the engine is turning at 2.7 RPS, right? So it's up, it's running. It is running as low as it can. Uh, this is saving us electricity or saving us fuel rather. We don't have any electrical load on here, so we don't need it going up. So first thing we need to do is put in a p-value here if we want this to charge. So we're going to put in a p-value of 1, all right? And we'll read the number here. As you notice, it's 0 0.000430, right? We're not actually using any electricity. Now, what we should notice, right, is when we turn on these lights to my left, that this number will go up, right? As we start to use electricity, the alternator PID is going to say, hey, I'm starting to use electricity. I want to be at full electricity. I need to start giving it more uh, RPS to generate more power. All right, so let's go ahead and turn it on, right? That's, uh, let's look at it again. Three zeros, 430. All right, we're starting to use up electricity. And as you can see, it's starting to rise there. It's starting to rise to try to use some electricity. But notice how small the number is. It's, you know, we're talking three decimal places there. That is trying to give us 0 0.0001 RPS. That's way too low. This is going to take forever to start to do it. So if we look, you can see the battery is discharging very slowly, but it is discharging. You see we are... Uh, currently, we're not at a high enough RPS to even engage the clutch, so we're not making any electricity. So what we need to start to do is bring this number up. So let's go ahead and we'll just keep doubling it. Now, I know we're going to need a reasonably large number because uh, this is, you know, three decimal places away. So let's start. We'll keep doubling it, and you can see what it does here. As we start to increase that, you notice the number gets bigger, and it's going to get bigger faster. All right, so there's an 8. You see the numbers going up. All right, 16. And you can hear the engine start to go here. Let's see if the clutch has gone in yet. Nope. All right, let's just uh, we'll go right to 40 on that one. And you notice now we're uh, only one decimal place away. Let's go to 80. All right, T still too little. Let's go to 100. All right. So this gives you a good visual representation of what's happening. If you understand, this number is telling the engine how many RPS we want, right? And so this number is way too small. So at this point, we know this number is very small. So let's go 500. And there we go. We're finally up to a reasonable number, 1.5 RPS. But we still haven't even engaged the clutch at this point. So let's go to 1,000. So now we're at 3 RPS. We have still not even engaged that generator yet. All right, so let's go bigger. Let's go 2,000. And there we go. That is 6 RPS. That's starting to get there. All right. Now notice it went up, and now it's going down. Why is it going down? Because we produced enough electricity to overcome the battery, uh, to overcome the electrical use by the lights. So as you can see, we're starting to produce electricity. The battery's going up. If we look at our generator, you can see the the output is a positive number. Okay. Now, these lights do not use a ton of electricity here. So let's go ahead and let's add some systems here that we'll actually use a little bit more. So let's go ahead and take a motor. All right. And we'll put the motor right here. Let's go ahead and put a wheel on there. And this is going to use up a little bit more electricity as the motor tries to turn the wheel. All right. And so I'm just going to make a real quick microcontroller here. So, and what this will do is just give us a number for that wheel. All right. So what we'll do here is we'll make it too wide. We'll go ahead. We'll add a note on off. This is the uh, toggle button. All right. And then what we'll do here is this will be a number output going to the electric motor. All right. There we go. Real simple here. Let's go ahead and we'll just put a, a numerical switch box. All right, so if we toggle the motor on, it's going to read us a value of 1. So this is the motor value, and I'm just going to put a 1 here. So what this is going to do is when we turn the button on, it's going to make that motor go uh, at 1. This is going to use up more electricity. So we can see that the lights use electricity, but not a ton. The motor is going to use more electricity. So let's go ahead and we'll update that. We'll go ahead and we'll uh, plug this in, right? Right, so the battery's fine. Uh, we want to go ahead and we want to plug this into the motor, and then we're going to put a separate toggle button. Again, this allows us to see how each uh, piece of electrical equipment uh, actually affects our system. So we'll plug that in right like that, and let's go ahead and spawn it again. All right, so now we have something that will use more electricity, okay? So let's go ahead. Uh, last number we had in here was 2,000. 
I believe. Let's go ahead and start the system. All right. So as you can see, the number is very, very tiny. Why? Because we're not using any electricity, right? There's nothing in this that uses electricity. We turn some lights. Now we're using electricity. Watch what the number does. Here comes the number. All right, number's coming up. So we are six decimal places where we're using electricity. So the lights use very, very little electricity. So as you notice, this number is coming up very, very slowly, right? We're not using much electricity, so the engine doesn't need to rev way up really fast, right? It's not a big deal. Let's put in some more electricity there. There you go. So notice, this uses a lot more electricity. So that number went up, and as you can see, it's going up to 140. That's fine, because remember, we have this capped out at 15 RPS. Uh, with the clamp, this is only ever going to go to 15 RPS. Okay, so now we get a better representation. Notice the number is still going down. So now we can start to tune in the actual gearbox on this. And we can use as much mechanical advantage as possible. So right now, it's a one-to-one. -one. So for every one rotation of the engine, in this case, we're doing 12 RPS, we're going to get 12 RPS of the generator. Now if we switch it, it's now a 6.5. It's pointed towards there. So for every 12.8 turns of the engine, we're getting 15 turns of the generator. As you can see, we're making 1.5 S watts. If we go back to the one-to-one, -one, we're making 1 S watts. So we just got a whopping 50% boost in electrical production by changing that gear uh, ratio. Notice that our, uh, that our electricity is still going down. This is not producing enough electricity. So let's bring it back. All right, so let's start tuning the system in. So 2,000 is a good number so far. That's working well. Let's go ahead and we'll go to 3.2 and we'll go to 9.5. So we'll just keep stepping this gearbox up until we get bigger and bigger numbers. All right, so let's start. Let's put 2,000 back in there. That number is pretty responsive for us. We start the system up. Lights, you notice it moves really slowly again with the lights. Boom, we put on that. It moves nice and fast and responsive, trying to get that engine turned up. All right, now we're making two S watts, 2.25, say. And so by increasing that gear ratio to a 3.2, we're making more power, right? The um, If we look here, the engine is still moving at 12.6 RPS. But now the generator is moving at 18.95. We're making more power. So let's go up the next gear ratio. All right, so now the engine is moving at 12.4, and the generator is moving at 22. As you notice, we're making even more now. Uh, if you look, we're still losing electricity, so we need to keep increasing this gear ratio. All right, so there's a 2.1. There's a 5.2. Let's go ahead and spawn it. All right, we will go ahead and put 2,000 back in this. That is a good number for us. Start it up. Again, moves very slowly because the lights don't use much electricity. But the wheel does. So once the wheel turns on, you see it starts revving our engine up. All right, let's look at it now. So we've increased the gear ratio again. So notice we're around 12 RPS on the engine, and we're, make, we're at 24 RPS on the uh, on the generator. We're up to 3.8 S watts. If you look at the electricity, we're still losing electricity though. Press the button and let's increase it again. All right, so now if we look, we're at 11.76 on the engine and we're at 29 on the generator. Generator is up to 5.5 now. You gotta be careful. Notice what happened. Remember, when I talk about gearing, you don't get anything for free. You're either trading power, which is torque, for RPS, which is speed, or you're trading speed for power, right? You don't get anything for free. So what we've done is we've traded away so much of our power to get more speed. You notice the RPS value of the engine has gone down. We're starting to load the engine. The engine now is not powerful enough to go over that 12 RPS we were getting before. This is still fine. We're still producing more electricity, but we do need to keep in mind that eventually we're going to get to a point where we can't produce enough electricity. So next thing we want to do, let's switch this again. So we only have one gear ratio left. We have 3-1. So let's go up to a 3-1 there. Let's go ahead and spawn this. All right, we'll put 2,000 in there again. All right, we'll go ahead and we'll start the generator. Okay. And we'll go ahead and start the wheel. There it goes. All right, now we should be getting up to around 11 somewhere where it was last time. All right, we're producing five and change S watts. You notice we're still losing electricity. So we have one more gear ratio left. We have a three to one on this single gearbox. Now, remember what I said, you're trading away your power
for more speed. We've already started to lose RPS on the engine now. So the prediction would be this, when we press the button and we switch to a three to one gear ratio, we're gonna lose some RPS on the engine, all right? Because we have taken away, we've stolen more of the torque for speed. And eventually we're gonna take too much uh, torque away that the engine's not gonna have as much power anymore. All right, so now let's look at the number, 5.5. Let's go ahead and press it. We're now at a three to one gear ratio and we're at 7.2. Let's look at the RPS of the engine. We're down. Let's look at it. It's 11.22. Let's go back. That is at 11.75, but we're producing more electricity. So this is when you can get into really good efficiencies. As you notice, we went from five something S watts. We're now up to 7.2. All right. Now by decreasing the RPS on this, we're doing a couple things. One, it's easier to cool our engine the lower our RPS is. It's also burning less fuel. All right, so this is how you get into efficiencies by gearing properly. All right, so this is looking pretty good so far. Let's go ahead and go back. And what we'll start to do is stack gearbox. So let's do a couple things. We know that that 2000 number is working for us. So let's go down here to the alternator P value and let's change that to 2000. All right, and let's plug this right in there. Now I'm gonna leave these here. I'm gonna leave this alternator PID value here. I'm gonna leave this P value controller here for the keypad. If you wanna play with the numbers yourself, you can, it will be in the workshop. But now we know this 2000 number is working pretty well for us. Okay, so we're gonna just hard code that in. All right, so next thing we're gonna do is we're gonna stack some gearboxes. All right, so what we're gonna do is we're gonna go ahead and we're gonna cut this out and we're gonna put it right there. Okay, and then we're gonna go ahead and we'll copy a gearbox and we'll put it here. Now, you multiply your gearboxes, you do not add them. So this is from gearing tutorial, transmission tutorial. You multiply your gearboxes, you don't add them. So right now what we're doing here is we have a 3-1. Let's go ahead and make that a 3-1, okay? And we'll go ahead, and this one will be the one we switch now. So let's go ahead and we'll plug the electricity into that. And let's change it. So now the first one will be at a 3-1, and this one will be the one we switch. All right, so this is a 3-1. Now, if this one is a 1-to-1, one one, right, let's make that 1-1. One, one. So this is going to be 3 times 1 is 3. 1 times 1 is 1. That's a 3-to-1. We're actually not changing it any here. So we're going to start to increase this again. There's a 6-5, and there is a 3-2. So really simple. That's 18 divided by 5, right? 3 times 6 is 18 divided by 5. 18 divided by 5. That is now a 3.6 to 1 gear ratio. So we've increased the gear ratio to now a 3.6. All right. Now the next ratio here is a 3 uh, over 2. So it's going to be 3 times 3, right? That's 9 divided by 2. That's a 4.5. So these are our two ratios we're going to be testing out next. All right. So let's go ahead and we'll test those out. So we're going to see if we can get enough electrical production for the tire. All right, so now we're at our, uh, all right, so we've gone up a little bit. Let's go ahead and look at it. So we're at about 7.2 last time. Look at where we're at now. We're up around nine. Look at that. So now predictions, right? We have increased the gear ratio. We have stolen more torque power. And we've converted it to RPS. We've already got to the point where as we steal more torque, the RPS of the engine is going down and down. We're making the engine weaker and weaker, but it's still powerful enough to give us even more uh, generator power here. As you can see, we're at 9.2. Again, this is a good thing. We're down to 10.5, we're at 11.2 last time. So what this is doing is this is decreasing the RPS of the engine. This is causing the engine to be more fuel efficient. It is also uh, causing it to produce less heat, which makes it easier to cool. And if we look at our electric number there, it's going up. So we now have enough gearing here to actually produce enough electricity to run this wheel. So you could make a diesel electric car if you wanted. You could make a hybrid where the engine runs a generator and the wheel is just run by electric motors. All right. So if you notice now, we're going up. So as we get close, look what this number does. All right. This number will start to go down as we get closer and closer to uh, full battery. But we're at a good enough p-value now that uh, if you actually went past that last decimal place, you'd notice that the numbers are still moving. You see them move for a second there. This generator is producing ex pretty much exactly as much electricity within six decimal places as this motor over here is using. And so as you can see, 
The battery is pretty much pegged at 992986. We are producing exactly as much electricity as this wheel is using. So this generator system is working really, really well here. This number here, that 2000 we put in there, is working well enough. It's working okay. Now, if we look here, we're at 14.0309, right? Let's turn on the lights. So notice the number went up. So what's happening there now is it is telling our engine, hey, we're now using more electricity again because we have all these lights on. Increase the RPS of the engine, all right? And you'll notice that goes up. Let's shut them off. So if you notice, the generator output now is down to 7.9. That doesn't mean anything's broken. That just means that we're producing enough electricity that the engine could actually back up. The engine doesn't need to be producing as much. So let's go shut the engine off, shut the lights off rather. So if we look, we're at 7.9 generator output. This is showing us a 14.078. Let's shut the lights back off. So let's make a prediction. We've shut the lights off. We're using less electricity. So this should be less than 14.078. It is 14.039. We don't need as much electricity. We could even calculate how much uh, RPS we need for the lights. We could calculate how much RPS we need for just the wheels. All right. So right now we know that the wheels are using this wheel here is using about 7.9 uh, s watts, right? These lights here, right? So we're at 7.938. All right. So 7.938, right? So if we uh, if we check, that's about 0.05 s watts is how many s watts are required for these lights. So the wheel, as you can see, it uses a hell of a lot more than these lights. But let's see if we can get more efficient. So what I'm actually doing for the next efficiency test here, let's go ahead and look again. This is a 6531. So the ratio we were using that was actually finally got us to the point where we're actually making positive electricity, we're not losing electricity, was a 3 times 6 is 18 divided by 5. That's a 3.6 to 1 gear ratio. Let's try this 3-2. Okay, let's see if that's better. Now, the reason I reset this is... Uh, we're already pretty much at stasis here, so I want to make sure that uh, we start fresh and make sure this is going to work. So let's go ahead and turn it on. Let's go ahead and turn the wheel. And let's go ahead and we'll switch gears. All right, so now we've geared this up even more. All right, so you hear the engine revving up. And now if you look, we're making positive electricity. All right, so now this, in theory and in practice, should be more efficient, right? We're at a higher gear ratio. We're now to at a 4.5 to 1. So for every one turn of the engine, we're turning this generator 4.5 times. Now, this is going to be more efficient. If we notice, the engine is only running at 7.9 RPS now. We're burning less fuel. We're making less heat. It's easier to cool your engine. It is also going to burn less fuel as we operate. So that's good. That's where we want to be here. So as you notice, this gear ratio is still working, right? Let's go ahead and turn the lights on too. All right, as you can see, we're still producing enough. So you, you can't go on forever increasing the gear ratios. We're going to go ahead and we'll finish up here, but you want to keep increasing your gear ratio until doing so makes so that you will lose power. Uh, you know, so you can just keep stepping this up until you start to lose power. That's going to be the point where essentially what you've done is you've traded away so much of your engine's power, you can no longer uh, turn the generator fast enough. And so at that point, you need to actually step back your gear uh, ratio increases uh, and get find a good one that's going to be stable for you. And so we don't want to go too far on this. We want to still have enough reserve power in the engine that in the event that we add some more things like more lights or uh, more motors, that it will uh, compensate for that. Eventually, you're going to get to the point where if increasing the gear ratio makes less or fewer S-watts, uh, you've reached the maximum capacity of that engine. And so what you need to do is at that point, just like with uh, other types of you know, the gearing tutorial uh, and the transmission tutorial, if increasing the gear ratio facing the engine causes, in this case, electricity to go down, you're going to need a bigger engine. So at some point, you might have to add a cylinder. And that's the nice thing with modulars. We could turn this two-cylinder into a three-cylinder, and we could add quite a bit of power. So hope you guys found that helpful. This will be in the workshop if you want to use this example. I'll leave all the parts connected here. You can go ahead and you can play with the keypad, set in your own p-values. I'll reconnect that. Uh, it's very helpful to use things like dials here. As you can see, we can read that it's giving us a reasonable value. 
Uh, if this was, if you remember when we started, it was 0. .000 something. It's going to be too low, so you need, know you need to go up. If it's telling us we need 5,000 RPS, we know the p-value is way too high. So this is nice and reasonable. It's telling us we need 12 RPS. That's within our range that we set, and we're all set. So this will be in the workshop. Hopefully you guys found that helpful, and we'll see you in the next one. Bye.